In this video, we're going to have a look at circular dependencies and how to fix them in Power BI. We're going to look at the two most common scenarios where you will encounter circular dependency and how you can fix it in both of these cases. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So circular dependency is one of those errors that used to give me a headache, especially at the very, very beginning when I was just getting started with Power BI and writing my own DAX queries. And in very simple terms, circular dependency is an error that basically happens when you have two things either columns or tables that you calculate, and they have some sort of relationship, either directly or indirect relationship when you do your calculation to them, creating a sort of loop. So this basically gives you an error because of this dependency. And in Power BI, it's very easy to hit a circular dependency just because of the many different things that you can do in Power BI, like being able to create calculated columns, calculated tables, and even relationships. So we're going to have a look at the two most common scenarios where you might hit this. So to start with, let's have a look at this semantic model that I've created for you today. It's a subset of the Northwind dataset, which is a dataset of a fictional company called Northwind, and they sell grocery goods internationally. So we have some information here, but the key idea with the semantic model is we want to show sales and kind of the total sales across different types of products and product categories. So we already have a bunch of tables here that we have set up. They're fairly simple. If you look at the categories, it's just a list of the different product categories. And then you have the different products, which has information about the different categories, what the name of the product is, and the product ID. And then we have a table here, which is a list of different orders, when they were ordered, and the order ID. And then we have order details, which gives us some information about the specific products ordered within these orders, like what products were ordered, how many, and how much they were for. I also created some tables here that would be useful. So I created a calendar table, which is the universal calendar table that I typically recommend you guys creating uh, to do your kind of time-based analysis. And I've also created a measure table here, a calculations measure table. And this is basically where we'll store the majority of our measures. We'll flip quickly to the model view, which should hopefully give you some idea of the kind of relationship we have. So we have the categories, which is uh, related to the products table. Uh, and the products table is related to the order details, which is our fact table. And then we have the orders uh, connected to the order details. And then the order date is then connected to the calendar table. So fairly simple setup that we have so far. So now let's flip to the table view here and let's go to the order details here. And let's say for each row in this table, we want to calculate the total sales by multiplying unit price and quantity. Now I'm gonna show you a not so efficient way of doing this, but uh, it's only for demonstration purposes, uh, just to show you when you would hit this circular dependency. So this is how you would typically write the, uh, the calculation if you want to calculate your, uh, your sales. So we would use, well, you don't really need to do this. It will just be unit price multiplied by quantity. But in this case, let's say we want to do a sum X. So we're gonna choose order details as the table. And uh, for this, we'll use unit price multiplied by quantity. Now, again, it's not the most efficient way to do this and to get this data, but uh, for now, or at least for this demo purposes, I'm just gonna show you how you will hit the, the circular error. So at the moment, it's giving us the total sales across all of the different categories in all of the products. So to fix this, you'll typically wrap this with a calculate. So the calculate function like this, and we don't need to add any filter context for now. We're just going to hit enter. And as you can see, this uh, calculation just simply gets the total cells that we need. So multiplying unit price and quantity. Now you might not use the calculate function like this, 
let's say you, you want to use the calculate function to add a filter context, which is the kind of typical scenario in which you would add the calculate function. So in this scenario, let's say we want to create this column to only sum the values to rows that belong to the seafood category. So what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm just going to rename it seafood so that we know what to refer to. And then at the end of the sum x here, we're going to add a filter expression here to say if the category's name is equals to seafood. Now, although we are in the order details table, we can refer to the categories table purely because of the relationship that we have set up between these two tables. So if you hit enter, you will see that it's the column got renamed and you only get the values multiplied or calculated if that specific product relates to seafood. Typically from here, you would want to create some sort of way to categorize these sales. So maybe if you want to categorize if they are low or high, and for that, we need to create a new column. Here, we're gonna create a new calculated column. So I'm gonna name this one uh, category, seafood sales category. And I'm just gonna do a switch just to, make it only show the values uh, or, or, or give the category if it's in the seafood category. So in here, we're going to say if the, if the total sales seafood is equals to blank. So basically, if there's no value, we'll keep it as blank. If, if it's less than 100, then we'll say it's low else we'll say it's high like this and here is the first scenario in which you would hit a circular dependency now the reason why you're getting circular dependency here and it's not really that obvious and it's purely because of these two calculated columns that we have created now if you look at the codes themselves it doesn't really look like there is a dependency and the thing that is not visible is the fact that the calculate function is the main culprit in this instance. So calculate function, when you add it in a column, basically uses context transition, which uses the rows in our table at the moment as a filter context. Now, what that means is that although we are only analyzing, like let's say unit price, quantity, and category name from the categories table, it still references at the back the seafood sales category that we have created after. And since seafood sales category is depending on the total sales seafood, because this is how it determines if, if the sales is high or low, it creates a circular dependency. So to solve this, we need to find a way to break this circular dependency between these two columns. And the simplest way to fix this is to add the remove filters in the calculate uh, function that we have created. So uh, looking at this total sales seafood here, let's, uh, let's add a new line. And I'm just gonna say remove filters. And uh, let's remove the um, the pointer or the reference that it has to the grouping that we have created, so seafood sales category. So what it will do is when it does the context transition to use the columns as kind of filters, it will do it will apply it on everything else in our table except this new column. So if you hit enter, you will see that it hasn't really fixed it. So maybe we'll need to click. Or let's let's just try to hit enter here, and there we go. So just reevaluating that DAX calculation, you can see that now this this calculated column works. It categorizes only the products that are in the seafood category, and it accurately defines them if they are high or low. We've basically broken the circular dependency issue. Let's now have a look at a different scenario in which you might encounter circular dependency. So. Let's go to the model view here. And we have basically, you know, we have a pretty simple uh, semantic model that we have here. And let's say we want to create a table in this model 
which is basically just the products that belong to the seafood category. So um, one of the ways that you might be able or you might want to do this is by creating a calculated table. So from this view, you simply go to new table. We're going to create this one called seafood. And then we're going to use calculate table. And we're using calculate table so that we can add the filter context to it to filter the category. So um, let's say for this, we want to use the products. And then the filter, it would be if the category is equals to seafood. And there we go. So it's created us a calculated column pretty easily. And if we just have a peek at that table, as you can see, all it's doing is, is basically getting the products table, but filtering out only the products that are in this category. Now, it's not really the most efficient way to do it, but it's only for demo purposes. So don't do it like this. Yeah. So now that we've created that, let's say we want to now utilize this. So we want to use the uh, products or the categories and create a relationship between these two tables. And let's say we want to create a relationship between now the categories and the new calculated table that we've just created. So we'll use category ID as we know. Just simply drag it there, leave this as one to many. And what you'll see is that you will get this error. Circular dependency was detected. Now, this one is a little bit more obvious. So since we created the calculated table based on the categories table, and now we're creating a relationship between the categories table and this new calculated column, there is now a dependency between these two tables. So you can't really make a relationship and we need to somehow find a way to break this dependency. Now, there are many different ways that you can resolve this issue. One of them is maybe not using it like this, or maybe creating the table directly in Power Query uh, as a separate table itself. However, if you want to still make a relationship sort of like this, then we can modify the calculate table function a little bit so that we are not um, get getting hit by this circular dependency. So from here, all we'll need to do is basically adjust this, uh, this filter here to not use the all because at the back, it's using the all function. So we just need to be a little bit more explicit with what we are basically referring to in this filter context. So I'm going to just copy that. I'm going to replace it with a filter. And then in this filter, we're going to use uh, in the table, all no blank row. And we're going to reference the categories table here. And then for the filter expression, we're going to just simply paste the, uh, the thing that we, uh, we copied earlier, which is just filtering the category name as seafood. And what this does is basically breaking that loop. So if you now hit enter and let's give that relationship a try once more, leave it as one to many. And there we go. So you're now able to create relationship between these two tables. And that's really it for this video. So those were the two most common scenarios in which you might encounter a circular dependency. I hope this video have helped you kind of fix the issues that you're having with this error. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.